Welcome to section 4.2.3 part 2. Um, we're going to do problem, uh, I think it's 87 in this one. And we're, we're not going to go through all of it, but we're going to kind of show how to use that um, method of equal values on it. The first part of the question tells us not to graph it, to solve it without graphing, and I wanted to show you why. Here I've made a graph of the um, two rules for this. We'll make it in a moment. We'll find out how to figure out the rule. But you notice when I do this, I'm getting that these two will be the same in about 18 years and about 16, 000, or 1,620 students. Okay? I've had to use a really, really large scale. Each line over here is going up by 100, and each line here is going up by 1. So the scale this way isn't too bad, but the scale this way, if I'm just a fraction off, then it is going to be really quite bad. So here's the story that they want us to have. They want us to know that Post Falls High School in Idaho has 1160 students and is growing by 22 students per year. And they want us to know that Richmond High School in Indiana has 1900 students and is shrinking by 15 students per year. So we're going to start using this equal values method by writing the rule and then setting the parts of the rule equal to each other and solving for both X and Y. Okay. So let's see, Post Falls High School, if I'm going to write a rule, it's going to be y equals something x something. See what they said, Post Falls, Idaho has 1160 students and is growing by 22 students per year. Well, I know this is my starting point, it usually goes here, is 1160 students and it's growing by 22 students a year. So I know that X's are measured in years. Okay. The other one, Richmond High School uh, in Indiana started with 1,900 students. And is shrinking by 15 a year. I'm going to show that it's shrinking. Shrinking to me is kind of like subtraction or going down, it's negative. And so it's shrinking by 15 per year. Once again, they're measuring X in years. I'm going to set these two equal to each other. This part right here and this part right here. 22X plus 1160 equals negative 15 x plus 1900. And by setting them equal to each other, I'm going to find the x. I'm going to find what x will make them both equal. Okay, now, as I move stuff, I'm going to get my x's to one side. I've decided I'm going to move the x's over to this side and the numbers over there. So let's see. The x term is minus 15, so the opposite of subtracting 15 is adding 15 X's to both sides. And that's going to be 0 because negative 15 and positive 15 is 0. And then I'm going to move this 1160 over to the other side. The opposite of adding is subtracting. And that of course is 0. I'm now ready to look and see what my numbers I get, 15 and uh, 15 and 22 is 37 X's will equal, let's see, I know some of you don't know how to do stack subtraction. Nope, I don't need to go over that far. Borrow one from there, four, I get 740. So 37x equals 740. If I divide both sides by 37, if I divide both sides, I'll get 740 divided by 37 is 20. And so I now know the x value. I can plug it into either of these. And a matter of fact, 
if I plug it into both of them, it's a great way to check to make sure that I'm getting the right value. So I'm going to try that really quickly. I'm going to try it in here. 22 times 20 plus 1160 will equal the y here. Let you see the calculator, what it's going to do. So I'm going to say 22 times 20 plus 1160 is 1600. So y equals 1600. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side really quick. Don't have to, but as I said, it's a really good check. Negative 15 times 20 plus 1900. Okay, negative 15 times 20 plus 1900 gives me y equals 1600. So I got the same answer on both sides. When I plugged it in to this side, 1600. When I plugged it into the other side, I got 1600. Now, I'm going to go ahead and write my answer. My x was 20. My y was 1600. I want you to look at how that compared to the answer we found using the graph. When I used the graph, I was two years off, two years early on that, and 20 off on the y. Now, this is a more exact method. We'll get you a better answer, but this gives you an approximate answer. And if you're in a hurry or you have a graphing calculator, maybe a way to get um, get at that answer more quickly. I hope this helps. And uh, I'm going to remind you that at the end of this section in the book, they also put in a methods and meaning box on solving linear equations. Just a reminder of how to do that because since it's been a while since uh, we have done that in the book. Anyway, good luck.